Shalom, and welcome to our continuing studies of the rainbow. Today we're going to discuss some of the physics of the rainbow. I know very little about physics, so this will be uh, short and somewhat rudimentary, but I think there are many things that we can still draw out about the rainbow. The rainbow is in the shape of an arc, and we talked earlier about the fact that the same word keshet is used for a bow as a bow and arrow. And this is a bow that's in the sky. It has the same shape. This shape is frequently used for bridges. This picture is from um, the first century in Spain. It's a, probably a Roman building of a, you can clearly see the arches. And the reason why the arch is a good shape for a bridge is that it is able to support a great deal of weight for the amount of building that there is. Here's an arch bridge that was built, I think, in the mid-1800s by um, Scottish immigrants to this country. And what we can see that reminds us of the Lord about the, the bridge and the arch uh, is in Psalm 55:22. Cast thy burden upon Yahweh, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. And again in 1 Peter 5, 7, Cast all your care upon him, for he careth for you. So the arch, the ark, can sustain a lot of weight. Not only that, but the weight is evenly distributed across the, the uh, radius or the circle of the ark. And so we can also see that it says in Galatians 6, 2, bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Messiah. So the whole idea that this arch can maintain a lot of weight, our burdens, our cares of this life, we can give to the Father and the rainbow arc reminds us he can support it and the sharing of one another's burdens of how the weight is distributed across the arc. Now, this is a quote from Wikipedia about the physics of the rainbow. It is impossible for an observer to see a rainbow from water droplets at any angle other than the customary one of 42 degrees from the direction opposite the sun. So you must be standing between the sun and the rainbow facing away from the sun in order to see the rainbow. In looking at this drawing of the tabernacle, we see that the north is at the top of the drawing, indicating that the east is at the opening. And if you read through the instructions of uh, setting up the tabernacle, it doesn't specifically say the door is on the east, but you can figure out from the relative places that the door was designed to be in the east. And this is important because when the priests go in to serve, they are walking away from the sun. The significance of this is shown in Ezekiel. Ezekiel 8.16 And he brought me into the inner court of Yahweh's house, and behold, at the door of the temple of Yahweh, between the porch and the altar, were about twenty-five men, with their backs towards the temple of Yahweh, and their faces toward the east, and they worshipped the sun toward the east. So they are facing the sun, and in that position, you cannot see the rainbow. Now, we do uh, sometimes face east because we're facing Jerusalem from where we are, and we also are looking toward the eastern gate to see, waiting for Messiah's return. But the idea is, here is that we ought not to be worshiping the sun. We need to turn our back on the sun, and then we can see the rainbow. Now, this is how the light bends to form the rainbow. The sun, the light from the sun, when it hits the raindrop, it refracts, it bends slightly. 
and then it hits the back of the raindrop. Some of the light does go through, but some of it bounces back, and as it's coming out of the raindrop, it refracts again to your eye. That uh, angle, however, that we talked about previously in the Wikipedia definition is 42 degrees. And I guess you probably know that 42 is the answer to life, the universe, and everything. In fact, when Douglas Adams was interviewed about why he chose 42, he said it was just sort of a joke. But in fact, there are no coincidences, and there are many things that are connected to this number 42. I have a list of maybe about 50 things. I'm going to read you a few of them. The most significant that we know is the time times and half a time, the three and a half years, 42 months, uh, which appears twice. Once it was in Elijah's time when there was no rain, and then again what we call the Great Tribulation in Revelation. This period of time is 42 months. We begin to get the picture that 42 is a number associated with trials and tribulations, and pressing through to the other side. There were 42 stops on the Exodus. There are 42 generations from Abraham to Messiah, according to Matthew. Balaam made 42 sacrifices. There are 42 words in the Via Hafta, that part of the, um, the part we say after the Shema, and you shall love the Lord your God, etc. There are 42 words in that. There are two people who reigned for 42 years. One of them was King Saul, and the other one was, in fact, Muammar Gaddafi. Some people who died at age 42, Elvis Presley, Queen Victoria's husband Albert, and also Dodi Fayed was killed uh, alongside Princess Diana. He was 42. In Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, the uh, friar gives Juliet a potion that allows for her to be in a death-like coma for 42 hours. Very recently, a movie came out called 42, and it is a story of Jackie Robinson. And that was his jersey number, which uh, I think is entirely, that number is entirely retired now. No one else can ever have that number. There's a man who, who worked through uh, the persecution and the trial. And he came out on top. Uh, maybe the most obscure reference, in 1965, a mathematician named Paul Cooper theorized that the fastest, most efficient way to travel across the continents would be to bore a straight hollow tube directly through the earth, connecting a set of antipodes, evacuate it, uh, that means take the air out of it, and then just fall through. The first half of the journey consists of free fall acceleration, well, the second half consists of an exactly equal deceleration. The time for such a journey works out to be 42 minutes. We know that the rainbow is associated with Noah, and they certainly went through a trial, persevered, and came out to the other side, and they got to see 42 degrees and angle to the sun, that rainbow. Next time, we will go on to some other interesting facts and, and get into the reference to the covenants. In the meantime, to Simita Inayim HaShemayim, keep your eyes on the sky. Your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.